Oh wow, what's the time of it? I just fell asleep and dozed off over here. And that's what we're speaking about today. It's a special edition over here where we're talking about the Shabbat Shluf, sleeping on Shabbat friends over here. I want to tell you just what I did this Shabbat also, which was highly unusual. And we're going to go on and find out just from some sources. Is it good to sleep on Shabbat? Have the Shabbat Shluf, as many people would call it over here. So friends, usually I don't really sleep on average night. To be honest with you, I'd sleep about five, five and a half, six hours on an average night, maybe it's not the best thing. Usually you should get between six to eight hours, some of the commentators say. So I do try and strive to clinch the six hours. But something unusual happened this Shabbat where I think I went to sleep. I was sending a couple of my boys some uh, Torah books and I dozed off just before 11 o'clock last night. Woke up 11.30, lo and behold, I went straight to sleep. Went upstairs and went straight to sleep. At the end, uh, it did come to some sort of price. We had a pumpkin soup last night i forgot to put it in the fridge so we had to dispose it which was uh, obviously not a good thing 11 30 i'm asleep and i wake up in the morning it's close to 8 30 so that's close to uh, nine hours sleep last night and let's just etch onto it the half an hour i had when i dozed off that's nine and a half hours which is really rare because i usually would get between probably seven to eight hours on a friday night that's my usual thing then on shabbat uh Lunch, we ate lunch, I was with the kids, the kids went to Tehillim, just nearby the house, and uh, eventually I think at 1.50, well it was about 2 o'clock, I went to uh, put my head down, and uh, usually I would rest 45 minutes on average Shabbat afternoon, I think uh, I need that, I don't usually rest like that, throughout the whole week I wouldn't get this nap in the afternoon, but I slept 45, 45 minutes usually, so today it nearly came to 2 hours, so I'm thinking to myself, I've, I've nearly slept about 11 hours this Shabbat, which is uh, half, of, nearly uh, 45, 48% of the day or whatever it is. And that's very rare. Usually I would get two hours or two and a half hours less sleep and stuff like that. So did I waste the Shabbat or not? So I felt guilty after this because I could have been learning Torah during that point in time. I could have been doing things in the house. I could have been teaching the kids something or learning with them. And I missed out on that time because of the sleep over here. So is it a good thing to oversleep on Shabbat. I don't think what I did was the best. It's obviously, uh, a uh, one hour each piece would have definitely been enough to a uh, redu- reduction would have definitely been enough. An hour sleep would have been nice. Uh, me personally, you know, it's nice to, on Shabbat itself. I love the sleep. It's, uh, it's something that gives enjoyment and gives onik Shabbat. And we know one of the things about Shabbat itself is there is a mitzvah to have onik Shabbat, the delight of the Shabbat over there and the sleeping is there. But now the question I've, I found inside a fantastic website over here of halachayomit.co.il. The question is posed, is there a mitzvah to sleep on Shabbat in order to fulfill the concept of sleeping on Shabbat is enjoyable, as we say here. Is this mitzvah over there on this holy day itself? So they, they write over here in the answer that we find that various Rishonim already mentioned that there is a mitzvah to sleep on Shabbat. For sleeping on Shabbat, is enjoyable and one is commanded to make Shabbat as enjoyable as possible. Obviously, we know that with clean clothing, with extremely delicious food, delicious fish, delicious soup, and great beverages. You have like the most delicious drinks, expensive bottle of wine, red wine, ideally. The same also will apply over here using that logic to the mitzvah of sleep drink, especially Shabbat afternoon, in order to make Shabbat enjoyable. So I've achieved that. Now, was a two-hour sleep too much? That could be over here, but definitely if it would have been a 45-hour sleep or a power nap, that would have been uh, totally fine and good also. Uh, I, then they question the who needs to sleep on Shabbat also, and I think they base this on Mesechet Shabbat. On page 118b, naturally called that Kuf Yudchet, on the classic uh, pages, those are of the Gemara itself, respectively. And Talmud Yushami will state, how must one make Shabbat enjoyable? One sage says, one must make it enjoyable by sleeping. Another sage says, one must make it enjoyable by studying Torah over here. So someone that's sleeping over here, he's not going to be able to study as much Torah as possible. Then the Gemara explains that these sages do not disagree. For one sage refers to a Torah scholar and another one to a layman. So should the Torah scholar be the one getting the sleep? Should the layman be the one learning Torah or vice versa? So then a commentator of the name Me'iri explains that regarding a Talmud Chacham, a Torah scholar who toils in Torah the whole week long, there's a mitzvah for him to sleep a little bit on Shabbat so that he is not too mentally worn out. So over here, this is going to be recharging the batteries, let's just say, and uh, it's enjoyable for him. 
However, regarding a layman, he will say, who does not toil inside the Torah so much, especially during the course of the week, there is a mitzvah for him to toil now on Torah on Shabbat itself. Because he's working the whole week, now is his opportune time to learn Torah over here. However, now let's, uh, the Me'iri is going to explain the Gemara exactly the opposite over here. They explain that for a Torah scholar, for whom toiling in Torah is extremely enjoyable, and actually someone learning Torah the whole day, there are very high chances he's enjoying it, you would hope so, there is obviously a mitzvah for him to make Shabbat enjoyable. How is he going to do that? By learning more Torah at that point in time. There's no great enjoyment for him, so he's not going to sacrifice on that. However, regarding a layman, for whom, you know, Torah study might not be as enjoyable. Obviously, in many cases it will, and we hope it's enjoyable for everyone. He should make Shabbat enjoyable by sleeping. So that's a reverse thing over here. So other Rishonim will weigh in, I think quoted by the famous Rabbi Chaim Yosef David, as you let, as we call him, the Chida, in the Machazaka Bracha book in chapter 290, they will concur with the opinion of the Mary rabbis. Well, interesting enough. So on the above, there seems to be a disagreement whether one should sleep during Shabbat afternoon or if one should delve into Torah study. But seemingly, a bit of sleep definitely is good. Now let's look at the Kabbalistic opinion according to this website over here. They said, Rabbeinu Chaim Vital, who was a great rabbi, I think Talmud of the Arizal, who we've spoken about before, says that sleeping on Shabbat is beneficial for the righteous and that the great Arizal would sleep on Shabbat for two hours in order to make Shabbat more enjoyable. So here we go. I slept two hours on Shabbat afternoon. And that seems, I'm like the Arizal here. Now, I'm, I'm definitely not on the spiritual level of the Arizal. So that is a chesron, a lacking of mine. That is one thing for sure. So it seems like the Arizal, uh, Rabbi uh, Yitzchak Luri Ashkenazi, as that's given his full title, will agree with the opinion that the Mary, that only Torah scholars should sleep on Shabbat. But for laymen, it's preferable that they toil in Torah all day long. So remember... That's what they say over here. Now, halacha, according to all opinions, according to the, this extremely good article, according to all opinions, it is improper for one to sleep through the entire Shabbat day. So if you're going to want to have a four or five hour sleep, then for sure it's not advisable. Like some of the customs go to sleep immediately following the Shabbat day meal until it's time for Mincha and Suda Shishit. So then you've wasted the whole afternoon, you could say. So if you ate the Shabbat meal, especially in the summer, when the Shabbat meal, you might eat very early. And then Mincha is going to be six hours later. So to sleep like five, six hours, or even in the winter, it might be three hours. That's definitely not. So it is incorrect to make Shabbat enjoyable with only physical enjoyments and to deprive one's soul of the ultimate enjoyment of Torah study. Indeed, the great rabbis especially uh, teach us inside various different books, uh, especially the Midrash Tanhoma of Parshat Vayakel, Sefer Shemot, that the Shabbat was given to the Jewish nation for them to delve in Torah study over here. So one should be learning Torah the whole time and not necessarily speaking. This is especially true during Shabbat, during the time of year, which are comprised of very short days, but very long nights. So over here, if it's a short Shabbat, like in the winter, uh, where it could go even at four, 4 o'clock, I think, in England. It goes out at 4.30, if I'm not mistaken. One should attend Torah lectures in those specific days. And uh, one that, that Shabbat is of the daytime, one should be learning the whole time. As a reward, one will merit enjoying a world which is completely Shabbat and rest for all eternity. That's a reward for it over here. So how about what did Rabbi Obad Yosef say? And uh, he's going to give an incredible story within regards to this, this article. is over here. Remember, on summer days... Uh, not to, maybe a bit of sleep will be uh, fine. Also in the winter, a little bit of sleep, but not to overdo it. So Rabbi Ovadi Yosef toiled, as we know, in Torah the entire life. Uh, he would toil in Torah on Shabbat with unique diligence and dedication and would look into various different topics that he did not have a chance to do during the week. So he might now delve into another category of Torah learning on Shabbat. Indeed, even in his younger years, when his children were still little, he would study Torah until very, very, let's say the wee hours of Shabbat night. The Shabbat meal will end at approximately 8 o'clock, reported over. Probably he would dub a net, I would assume, obviously. And he would remain awake learning for hours on end. Since the house was so cold... He would take his coat and drape it over his head. He would then sit in this way uh, with great thirst until the late hours of night. So there was a story once over here they bring where he visited the United States and stayed in the, the home of a great Rabbi David Ozeri. Rabbi David Ozeri, who was one of the re- leading rabbis in the Brooklyn Sephardi community over there. And the rabbi prepared Chacham Ovadia and his wife, the Rabbanit, their own private room to sleep in. On the Erev Shabbat, Rabbi Ovadia Yosef asked his host, if there was a small night close 
to the room so that he could learn a little on Shabbat night. So Rabbi Ozeri replied that he had prepared a night light in the large closet within the guest room. And when Rabbi Obad Yosef would open the closet door, there would be lights in the room. And when the door was closed, he would be able to sleep. On Shabbat morning, Rabbi Ozeri asked the Rabbanit if the accommodations in their room were satisfactory. In, to which she replied, everything was just fine. The Rabbi took a chair, brought it into the closet, closed the door behind him and learned Torah all night long. So I just showed that uh, someone on the statue of Chacham Obadi Yosef, Rabbi Obadi Yosef, he will be learning Torah the whole time. But just to make some conclusions of it, yes, sleeping is good. Yes, Onik Shabbat is good. Should I have slept so much in Shabbat? Probably not. It wasn't the wisest thing in the end. Was it, was it terrible? No, it was two hours. It was a summer day. And so that if it would have been in the winter, I would have slept the two hours, then it would have been a worst case scenario. But I think next week I'll try and sleep less in the night time, try and get the seven, eight hours and uh, not, not go over to nine hours and probably sleep maybe 50 minutes or an hour in the daytime as opposed to two hours over here. So wishing you all a week of Torah and may our sleep have a bracha, a blessing inside of it and good things and recharge us. Wishing you all a great day.